So in this video, we're going to do an overview of cellular respiration, just what you need to know for an introductory biology course. So who does cellular respiration? All organisms all the time, not just animals. Plants do respiration too. All organisms have to be able to constantly regenerate their ADP and phosphates back into ATP so that they can power all of the cellular work that needs to be done all the time. So uh, this is a constant process going on in all living organisms, and so that's why we want to study it in some detail in this course. Uh, we certainly need you to know, know the uh, chemical equation, the summary equation, and so sometimes we put it in terms of words. Um, I'm also going to show you the chemical equation in just a minute. So going in, sugar and oxygen, and technically ADP and P are there to be put together from the energy that we're releasing by cutting up the sugar. What do we get out? Carbon dioxide, water, and then of course ATP. Um, or as it turns out, we're going to see this, but it's the sugar that turns into the carbon dioxide and it will be the oxygen that turns into the water. Um, and then the whole goal is to make the ATP. These are really just byproducts, the carbon dioxide and water. We're trying to regenerate the ATP. So that's kind of the key part of the equation. I generally like to write it as three arrows. That's not going to be something that I'm concerned with uh, when you write your equation, but I just like to do that in an attempt to make sure we're clear. This is just a summary equation. Um, the sugar and the oxygen are not directly combining together or interacting together. Um, this is actually a multi-step process and these are just the overall reactants and products. So we can also write these in terms of chemical formulas, which I want you to be able to do for these particular chemicals. As it turns out, there are a lot of different uh, uh, macromolecules you can burn in a respiration process, but we're going to assume glucose. Um, your body would prefer to have access to sugars to burn, but you can also burn fats or even amino acids if you're desperate. Um, so, but we're going to assume glucose. So C6H12O6, oxygen is O2. Um, ADP and P, we'll just represent that way. We're not worried about chemical formulas for them. Uh, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water is H2O. Now, um, most uh, textbooks that you'll see represent the equation will also balance this chemical equation, something that you'll do more in an introductory chemistry class um, if you've not learned already. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and balance the equation. We basically just want to make sure that there are the same number of C's, H's, and O's on both sides. And you could do that by saying that for every one molecule of glucose, six molecules of oxygen react and then form six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. But again, that's really not um, a very big concern for me in this course. Just be able to give me the, the correct chemicals and on what side of the, the equation they are on. Okay, but here in high school, we want you to be able to give us a more sophisticated picture of how the respiratory process works. And so we're going to see that there are kind of multiple steps that involve uh, steps within them as well. And so we're just going to try and, and really broadly survey what's going on in those processes too. So let's start with glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs no matter which of these forks you go down, and we'll talk about the difference between them a little later as well. So let's see glycolysis. Now this picture is way too complicated for our purposes, so nothing to memorize here. All I want to point out briefly is that this is a very typical kind of pathway for how complicated chemical reactions are within cells. And so what I want you to see is that there are oftentimes multiple steps of chemicals turning into other chemicals. Um, if you look at some of these very small words here, you can see that there are enzymes that speed up each step. There's a different enzyme for each different conversion because remember, as we said in the enzyme video, um, each enzyme can only speed up one type of chemical reaction. So lots of ACEs that we see in the, in the root words of those uh, enzymes. Okay, um, so what, what really is kind of a better way to summarize glycolysis? What are we doing? Um, first of all, I like uh, the name glycolysis because it's telling us exactly what happens. Glyco means sugar, as in glucose, and lysis means splitting. Um, we'll see that root word uh, quite a bit um, in other vocabulary terms coming up. So we're, just, we're starting to cut up the sugar. We're taking what was before that C6H12O6 hexagon, and we're starting to cut it up into smaller sugars. And by cutting it up, um, a lot of energy is being released as well. Um, energy is also released in a form that we're not going to talk about, um, but we're trying to get this ATP energy. So as it turns out, the glycolysis process itself makes a little bit of ATP, um, but not um, all of it is ATP to start with. 
Okay, so let's continue down the right path first. We'll get to fermentation a little bit later, but assuming that we have oxygen available, we can continue to finish cutting up the sugar in this next step that's sometimes called the Krebs cycle in textbooks, sometimes called the citric acid cycle. Sorry that that's, we haven't quite decided as a, as a biology group which one to call it. Um, but in any case, this also looks very complicated and this is also way too much information for us. But essentially, um, I just wanted to point this out one more time as a way of once again highlighting all the enzymes that are involved in all of these different steps that end with ACE. Um, and how many steps this is. And, and by the way, I just also want to emphasize the almost universal nature of this process in all kinds of living organisms. Um, so this process occurs the same way with the same steps in all kinds of different living species. Um, and so that makes us humans have a lot in common with all the species of this planet. Okay, so what are we doing in the process? We are just finishing cutting up the sugar. Um, we saw that in glycolysis, we kind of cut up the glucose, but there's more to cut up. And so we can actually finish cutting up the sugar. And when you fully cut up the sugar, you turn it into carbon dioxide. It's the sugar that becomes the CO2. It's the C6H12O6 that becomes the CO2 um, in the end products. And just like glycolysis, by cutting up the sugar, you're continuing to release energy. Um, we see that, it, again, it's in this form that we're not really going to discuss, but we do make a little bit of ATP, not a lot, in the Krebs cycle as well. Okay, and if we're finishing up this respiration, assuming that we have oxygen, all of this really is respiration. Um, then we can finish by doing something very complicated sounding, the electron transport chain, and then technically a step after that called chemiosmosis. Those are, this is beyond the scope of an introductory course. Um, you see that it's also kind of complicated. We talk about what exactly is happening here in a more advanced course. Um, so for uh, our purposes, I'm going to keep it very simple. This is where oxygen is needed. Oxygen is needed almost at the very last step. Um, but this is why um, respiration can't occur without oxygen. Oxygen has to be there to grab something, as it turns out, and it's the oxygen that becomes water. And for our purposes, the real purpose of this process is to take all of that energy that, that existed in the other form that was produced during the previous two steps and to turn that energy into ATP energy, which remember was the end goal. So essentially we're just kind of taking all of that other energy and we're just making sure that we max out the ATP energy that we want to make. So um, that's kind of the respiratory process, that's cellular respiration. But sometimes if cells can't get access to oxygen, because oxygen is needed in that last step, if oxygen's unavailable, glycolysis can still occur, but then we have to switch to something called fermentation. And fermentation is kind of a, a little bit of a compromise process. We'll see that it definitely has some downsides, but it's better than doing nothing. Um, this is kind of a picture of fermentation, still enzymes involved. As it turns out, it just involves glycolysis. Here's that first step, and then kind of a simple step after that to finish the process. As it turns out, with, uh, with fermentation, we can't really finish cutting up the sugar like we did in the Krebs cycle. Um, here are our leftover sugars from glycolysis, if you recall. And really what we're going to do is instead of finishing cutting them up and turning them into CO2, we're just going to kind of turn them into another kind of sugar. Um, for us humans and, and animals, that, that, sugar, uh, that, that kind of final product is lactate or lactic acid. Um, lactic acid is a little bit toxic when it builds up. And so um, if you've ever, sometimes your muscles go into fermentation when you're lifting something really heavy and you can't deliver oxygen to your muscles fast enough. And so they switch over to fermentation and you feel the burn of your workout. What you're really feeling is the lactic acid, slightly toxic product building up in your muscle cells. And that causes a little bit of a pain sensation. So um, the bummer of fermentation is that you can't finish up cutting up the sugar. Um, and as it turns out, you don't make nearly as much ATP. That's why I kind of made it small over here. Um, you, because you're not finishing cutting up the sugar, you can't generate nearly the amount of ATP that you generate in cellular respiration. Um, so why even do this process? Well, at least it keeps glycolysis going. And remember that glycolysis made a little bit of ATP. So like I said, it's better than nothing. Although if you're really working out hard and you go into fermentation, you might even um, uh, have the sensation of muscle failure. Let's say you're doing a bench press and you work to your absolute max. Eventually, if you don't make very much ATP at all, you might not be able to give uh, to make enough ATP to get your muscles to continue to contract. And so you can't lift the weight any further. 
Um, all of that is due to fermentation. So what do you do? You uh, rest, you allow your body to go back to respiration, and then you might be able to um, do another set. So um, in summary, you really need to know this formula. How do I like to remember the formula? I just try to think about what we do all the time. You are a cellular respiration machine. Your organs and, and a lot of your major systems are just made uh, there to make sure that you have access um, to all of these things for all of your cells. Um, you have a digestive system in order to get nutrients like sugar. You have a breathing system in order to get oxygen. And you have a circulatory system to constantly deliver that sugar and oxygen to every single one of your body cells so that you have the sugar and the oxygen that you need to make your ATP. Um, think about um, how do you remember what's on the left side of the equation? You take in sugar, you breathe in oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide, and if you breathe into your hand really quick, you'll feel kind of the wetness maybe of the water um, uh, that you sort of produce in cellular respiration. So that's how you kind of uh, maybe can remember it. We also talked about the difference between fermentation, um, kind of a temporary um, bummer um, for many reasons, versus cellular respiration, very clean burning, very efficient.